I hate diet and exercise. I hate, there's, if you go to a gym, has anyone been to those? <laughs> it's so terrible. There's all these things where you don't know where to put your hands or feet. There are so many rules and no one explains it to you. They just give you more towels. <laughs> it's so terrible. I, I, tried, I tried exercise. I didn't realize that you needed to wear a sports bra and I almost ripped my tits off. <laughs> so heard the tearing. I was like, I gotta sit down. <laughs> it's so bad. Lately, I've been real into making like vision boards and dream boards and shit. Okay, you on there? You okay, 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 okay. You got to. Why else you living? If you don't got dreams. If you guys don't know what a vision board is, it's where you take a list of goals. You can make a collage. You can do whatever you want with it. You have a list of goals, things you want to accomplish. They could be for your personal life, your spiritual life, your career. You could just put things you want to buy. It's okay. <laughs> and you put that someplace where you can see it every day. I put mine in my bedroom. So as soon as I wake up, I sit up, and I can see it. And I can go, okay. These are the things I'm going to focus on today. These are the things I'm going to accomplish this year. And then sometimes those things actually happen. <laughs> but most of the time, they do not. <laughs> it's very frustrating. But you still gotta have dreams. You gotta have goals, you know? A couple of years ago, in my apartment complex on New Year's Eve, I was having this little vision board party, just hanging out. <laughs> oh, you know how to <laughs> We were just getting faded, supporting each other spiritually and shit. <laughs> yeah. And my best friend, Gabe, was there. Uh, and Gabe asked me, he's like, what's your biggest dream? You got to be able to say it out loud if you want it to come true. And I was like, my biggest dream, to tell you the truth, Gabe, is I, I want a home base. I want to be able to have a house for me and my son. And then the next New Year's Eve, we had another vision board party in my brand new house. <laughs> And I was like, oh, shit. Why didn't I ask for more stuff? I didn't think this would really work. I'm still seeing my therapist over Zoom. And it's weird. I don't like it. Because I've never seen inside my therapist's apartment before with her knowing. And she's one of those Freudian therapists where, like, every time I ask her a question, she twists it into a question about me. Like, I asked her, I was like, when are we gonna start meeting in person again? And she was like, why are you under my bed? <laughs> I think everyone should be in therapy, especially more men need to be in therapy. Yes, 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 yes. But they're very reluctant. Men are very reluctant. My, my best friend, his name is Josh. He's my age, he just went through a second divorce. He's been very depressed. And I told him, I was like, you should go to therapy. And he was like, nah. Running. <laughs> Running. That's my therapy. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting because sushi, that's my haircut. What the fuck? treat depression like the disease that it is, right? Yes, yes. You know, you, 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 you wouldn't tell someone with diabetes to run it off, because you need both feet. Yeah, yeah, people who go to the gym all the time, that's what, that's what they do. Like, I got a friend that goes to the gym twice a day, before work, after work. I'm like, you work for State Farm, who the are you trying to be? You doing two a days? Look, man, just do 10 more the first trip. I wish I, could, I wish I could like believe in like going to the gym because I, like, I, I try to eat, I eat very well so that I can drink because I drink like a fish. So I try, to, I try to eat well so I can try to stay. But it's like nothing, it's nothing up under here worth looking at. 
And I try like every year, like every you know, first quarter, like I'm gonna I'm a join the gym, I'm gonna be better. And then by April, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna be the same piece of I was last year. I'm better for that, right? But this February, I got this February, I got uh, I got like I you know I was like I'm gonna give me a trainer, so I got on I got on Groupon and because because I want to be 100 percent better person, but only for like 60 percent off, you know. <laughs> But I get to the, I get to, you know, get my, I get to the gym, got my voucher, and I was like, I, I got ten sessions, and so I'm like, I'm, a, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it, right? And so I'm like, where's my dude? And he's at the machines already, and so I go to the machines. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? I'm your new client. And the dude is like, are you, like, what are you, I was like, what do you, what do you like? I was like, man, what the f is wrong with you? <laughs> is that gonna happen to me? I cannot have that happen to me. I already cannot smoke weed. I don't need this too. <laughs> and dude's like, what are you talking about? I was like, man, don't act like. You don't know what your neck and shoulder got going, man. I, I try to turn away, but it's mirrors everywhere, okay? I see it from every angle. And dude's like, what kind of results do you want? And I was like, look, man, I... Stop it, stop it. And I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't, I don't need, um, I don't need abs. Uh, I mean, I think they're cool. If you have them, you won, congratulations. But like... But I don't need abs. Just, I, just cause like I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that dude that has to one day remember having abs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause you can't keep them. No matter how hard you try, they're just gonna go away. And I don't want to be the asshole that has to scroll through his Instagram 300 weeks ago and be like, "Remember that summer I had abs? <laughs> that was a great summer." Even, even if you are like that anomaly that keeps abs just whole, you ever seen that, you seen that commercial where that dude was like, I'm 70 years old, I'm in the best shape of my life. He's like, the cul-de-sac haircut. You're like, man, you look gross, man. Why do you have abs? Just be a regular grandfather. Put your shirt on when you go check the mail. You look stupid. You're thinking about vision boarding? That's funny, okay. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be vulnerable with y'all, but I, I'll hold it back. No, I, was, I wanted a vision board, right? But I just don't know how long you have to complete the visions. Like, I've heard everything from like a week to like, till you die. I'm like, I'm like, those are supposed to be two different things, right? <laughs> I had no idea, I just put mad obtainable shit on there. I was more, that shit turned into a grocery list, if anything. Like I got Nike socks, remember to get deodorant. Maybe get a sandwich named after me at the delis. Something to strive for, you know what I'm saying? Really put in that work. I did get a letter the other day from the IRS. Yeah, well, I got it like last year. I just opened it up the other day. I did. Uh, I threw that shit right in the garbage, cause uh, like I tried to open it, right? And then I got a paper cut and I was like, you know what? This was not on the vision board, right? Distracting me, taking me off course. I was like, we gotta do better. <laughs> I've been trying to practice self-care lately, okay? But what I usually do is not hitting the spot no more, you know? Because normally for me, how I refill the well, okay? How I take a breath um, is by watching a lot of true crime and listening to true crime podcasts. You know, it gives me a much needed perspective, honey. It really does. I was watching one of my jams on Investigation Discovery, which you know is the channel, okay? <laughs> I was watching one of my jams. And it was an hour long show about a woman in Wisconsin who was locked in a box for two months. And I was like halfway through the show and I was like, I'm doing all right. You know what I mean? It's like, even on my worst day, I'm not living a box life. And that is crucial, you know? You gotta keep that in mind. Plus it's like, so like on one hand that's good, but then at the same time, I think now I'm like getting too upset about it. And it's funny because my fiance, he always knows when I'm watching true crime because I'll just come into whatever room he's in and start making pronouncements that make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> like he'll be like at his laptop and I'll be like, FYI, I am never getting life insurance. <laughs> he's like, all right. <laughs> I am one year sober. <laughs> I noticed that when I quit drinking, my husband started collecting expensive whiskey. <laughs> Thought that was a little annoying. So I was like, babe, how come when I quit drinking, you started collecting whiskey? 
And he was like, I have been trying to collect it the whole time. Oopsies. I am from Wisconsin though, that's just what we do, we drank. We have t-shirts in our airport that say, drink Wisconsinably. <laughs> My first shot of hard liquor was Everclear. Yeah. If you don't know what that is, congratulations. <laughs> you have homework. It's 190 proof grain liquor. And that being your first shot is a lot like losing your virginity to a traffic cone. Everything else is smooth sailing. <laughs> when I was 15, I gave up drinking for Lent. <laughs> but that was too hard, so I gave up Catholicism instead. 